We've currently got a little bit of rain going on, but it's Florida and the weather changes every five minutes and I think it's supposed to clear up. So we should be okay with today's plans. Today's plans are to do a little something different. I don't know that we've done one of these before. We've done smoker reviews and stuff where we cook something in the video, but I don't know if we've done a full cook video. And actually, got big plans for this summer. You guys have got to help me actually think of a name. We're gonna do a summer smoking series or a summer grilling series. But I think my boy Chud over at Chud's Barbecue, if you've never watched that YouTube channel, by the way, definitely go check out his channel. He has a fantastic channel. I think he has one called the Summer Grilling Series. So we can't use that. Or maybe his is the Summer Weber Series. Summer Outdoor Cooking Extravaganza. <laughs> I don't know, we gotta think of a name. Help me think of what we can call this series. Cause what I'm planning on doing is over the next few months, being that it's grilling season for most of us here uh, in the United States and probably Canada and most of the Northern hemisphere, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of cook videos. And today we're gonna do a cook on my new Traeger, the Traeger Timberline XL, but never fear for you guys that are offset smoker fans. I do have an offset. I actually ordered a brand new custom offset. I'm waiting for that to come in before we do any offset videos, but they're coming. Right now I have a um, Brazos, uh, Old Country Brazos, which is a fantastic smoker in its own right. It does really good, but I have a new one. Surprise, I'm not gonna tell you which brand yet, but uh, it's really awesome. I'm really stoked about it, and I think it'll be here early June. So we'll do some offset smokers about then. I also have a uh, Santa Maria grill that should be here next week. We're gonna do some cooks on the Santa Maria, we're gonna do some cooks on the offset. We're gonna do some cooks on the Traeger. Do some comparisons like Traeger versus offset. It's gonna be awesome. Cooking series, summer, outdoor, I don't know. You guys are better at this shit than me most of the time. Help a brother out. But today, we're cooking one of probably my favorite cuts of meat. It's probably my favorite. Actually, I think it's my favorite cut of beef. If you've never had it, today's gonna to be a good one because it is fantastic. Today, we're gonna to be cooking up some picanha. Oh yeah, picanha. Oh yeah, so good. We've been cooking picanha in the Sires household before cooking picanha was cool. It's kind of a big thing right now on the internet. Everybody's cooking picanha. I've seen it over the past year or so. One of the butchers at Costco, back probably like four or five years ago, turned us onto these. Now he didn't call it a picanha, he called it a sirloin cap, which is the other name for this. He's like, man, you need to put it on your smoker, smoke it for a couple hours, slice it up real thin, it's delicious. And that's how we ate them for years, and they're really good that way. Today we're gonna do more kind of the traditional Brazilian style, where we're gonna cut them into steaks. We got a Santa Maria grill coming soon that will be fun. We're gonna probably do another cook of a picanha once that comes in. But for right now, we're gonna do it the way I've been doing it for quite some time, and that is cutting them into steaks, doing a reverse sear by putting them on the Traeger for a little while, getting some smoke on them, and then searing them off on some flames, which is delicious. If you haven't seen a picanha, big hunk of meat on the back, fat cap here on the top. This particular one here is about I wanna say it was close to four pounds. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this bad boy up into steaks. That brings me to the sponsor of today's video because if we're gonna cut this guy into steaks, we need to have a little conversation about knives. You guys know if you've watched the channel, I'm a big pocket knife guy. I like nice knives. One I got today, if you're into that kind of thing, is a Protec TR3 operator, TR5. It's either a TR3 or a TR5 operator. I always mix up my TRs, but anyway. Really awesome knife. You gotta take care of your knives. You gotta keep them sharp. A dull knife is a dangerous knife and kitchen knives are the exact same way. If they're dull, they're gonna tear up your food. They're not gonna cut right. You're gonna have to push harder than you should to get through stuff. And that's when you can potentially hurt yourself, which is where the good folks that sponsor today's video, WorkSharp, come into play. I know you guys have heard me talk about WorkSharp in the past. I did a whole video on their Precision Adjust Elite, I believe is the name of it. Uh, it's what I've been using to shop, sharpen my pocket knives for quite some time now. Today, we're gonna talk about some of their kitchen sharpeners. Now, you can use the Precision Adjust Elite on some kitchen knives, certainly, but they came out with this guy right here, all new electric professional knife sharpener from WorkSharp. If you get into real long knives like this guy here, it gets kind of hard to do them on that precision adjust. This is where this 
sharpener is great because any length knife, you just run it right through there, it does a great job. There are three settings. One is a higher speed for shaping. Then you've got a sharpen setting, which is a medium speed. And then there is a slow or refined setting that is for everyday touch-ups. It's slow and gentle, and it really helps keep your knives razor sharp. It also has these really nice leather lined guides. Some of the knife sharpers I've had in the past will scratch up the sides of your knives. And if you spend a lot of money on your kitchen knives, you don't want that happening. Also on the inside, you can store additional belts. You've got different levels of belts for different refinements, whether you're reshaping, sharpening, polishing. Either way, you're gonna get a super sharp knife sharpened the same way the factory sharpens it on a premium engineered sharpening belt. And you guys are gonna see what a good job this guy does in just a minute when we go to cut up this pacaña because we want our steaks to look pretty, man. You don't want a bunch of hacky saw marks in there. In a dull knife, that's what you're gonna get. The other thing that they have is this ceramic honing rod. I also really love this thing. I don't use my metal one that came with my knife set as much anymore. I've really been going to this guy. Uh, it has angle guides on the side, which is really nice. You, nice, you just go in here, put this on here, kind of run your knife down there. But this one's really just to touch your knives up on a regular basis. Uh, anytime you're gonna do some cutting, make sure it's razor, razor sharp. Really love that thing, use it all the time. The guys at WorkSharp also have a whole array of sharpening things for knives, so definitely check out their site. Depends on how much time I have to put into sharpening my knives as to which sharpener I go to a lot of the time. I will leave some links down below of some of the products that I use often for you guys to check out if you're interested. And big thank you to the guys at WorkSharp for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Now that we've talked about the importance of sharp knives, let's get to cutting up this picanha. Now, like I said, you got a nice fat cap, meat down here on the bottom. You wanna check out your grain. You can see on this guy, the grain is running this way. I don't know how evident that's gonna be on camera, but the grain is running this way. Now, depending on how you're cooking your picanha, depends on how you're gonna do these steaks. Because we're gonna cook them in steak form today, I'm gonna to cut with the grain. And I know that sounds sacrilegious. People are like, you never cut with the grain. Well, you do with these steaks because then as you cut the steak up, the final cut on the steak is gonna be up against the grain and it's gonna leave you with a super tender bite. A lot of times when they're putting them on the skewers, they actually cut against the grain because then they're gonna be shaving them off the skewers, which then gets your final cut in the right direction. Let me square this side up just a little bit here. Save that quick that knife went through there. I don't know if you saw how smooth that was, but I'm gonna do these about, hmm, what's that? That's about an inch and a half, I'd say. You see that? Like butter, went right through it. Another little trick is I like to put my picanha in the freezer for only like 20, 25 minutes before I cut it because the colder it is, the easier it's gonna cut. Now it's Florida, it's hot as hell out here. So this thing's been sitting out here with me for a bit. So it's, it's uh, thawing out fast. Um, but if you firm up the meat a little bit by putting it in the freezer for a little while, it does oftentimes make your, uh, your cuts a lot easier. See that though? Look at that. Like butter. Look at that. Boom. One cut. See how smooth that is along the edge there? That's what you want. Nice, pretty cuts. Look at that. For God's sakes, don't get your finger in the way. It'd be gonzo. That one's a little thinner than the rest, but that's basically what we ended up with there. Four decent ones and a little baby. Now, and then a couple little snacks for the dogs. These little off cut pieces, I always still throw these on the smoker and then I give them to the dogs they love them. The other thing we're going to do is you don't want to trim your fat cap off on these because that's what gives these great flavor, but you only want as much as you're comfortable eating, right? So like these guys, that's about right. I usually go for about a quarter inch, but like here, it's a little thick. So what I'll probably do is I'll just go in and just shave off some of that fat cap there real delicate like you see that see the difference there see how that's like about of a quarter inch now in comparison to this piece see how it gets real fat right in here now and also you never want to throw away beef fat because you can save that render that down for beef tallow which is useful for all kinds of stuff cooking briskets put it in your beans put it in whatever you want it's great stuff to have around the house I like, I'm basically in the world of like just dry brine everything. I found out about dry brining not too long ago and it, it's changed my life. There's such a difference in flavor of steaks when you dry brine. For dry brining, what you wanna do is 
nice liberal coat of some nice big salt. So I'm gonna just give these guys a nice liberal coat of this flake salt. Don't be afraid of it, it's hard to oversalt this stuff. Get the sides, get the other side here. So those are nice and coated with salt. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna transfer these in the house onto like a wire tray, you know, cookie sheet with wire, so that way air can get underneath of them. I'm gonna put them uncovered in my refrigerator for at least a couple hours. I generally find that anything two to four hours is sufficient. Four or five hours is perfect. And once they've had time to sufficiently suck in all that salt, and do all the happiness that dry browning does, we're gonna come back and get these babies cooking. All right, next, ooh, shit. Son of a bitch, that's hot. No need for gloves, that wouldn't make sense, Jeremy. Why would you have gloves? Pick up hot stuff, that's dumb. Next, we're gonna make some chimichurri to put on this when we're done. This is the chimichurri that we make. I don't know, this is traditional chimichurri, and that's kind of fun to say, chimichurri. What do you think, Al, chimichurri? It's a fun word? Chimichurri, sounds like some Ace Ventura would say, chimichurri. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that traditionally it's something they put on picanha, but it's really good on beef. So we're going to make some and put it on there. You can put it on there, you cannot. It's really good without it, I'll tell you that much. We've had it plenty of times without it, but it's also really good with it. So you take your pick. I fire roasted a jalapeno. So you definitely want to take the stem off there. Now, as far as the seeds and all the insides and all that stuff, it really depends on how hot you want it. If you take out all the membranes on the inside and the uh, seeds. It's gonna make it milder. You put them in there, it's gonna make it a little warmer. I'm choosing to take half. Why do they make food processors? Why do they make food processors so complicated? There's 83 safeties on a food processor. It makes no damn sense to me why there are so many safeties on a food processor. It's dumb. I mean, what are you gonna stick your hand in there? I mean, come on. They don't have all these safeties on a garbage disposal you can stick your hand right in there and flip the switch why is there going to be 93 safeties on a food processor <laughs> anyway that's my rant i am choosing to take half of the seeds out because i don't want ring burn later if you're not familiar with ring burn just think about it you'll figure out what ring burn is it's the after effects of eating hot food i'm going to put one jalapeno that i fire roasted you don't have to fire roast it i chose to because i think it's good that way about i don't know four or five cloves of garlic depending on uh Depending on your jam, I like to pulse the garlic a little bit. I find that it sometimes mixes it a little better because if you don't chop the garlic up at all beforehand, I feel like it doesn't, sometimes you end up with chunks. Push that stuff down in now. About two cups of parsley. And guys, a lot of this, by the way, chimichurri, it's kind of to taste. So if your measurements aren't exact, don't stress. One cup of cilantro. Unless you're one of those people that uh, thinks cilantro say, tastes like soap. What the hell's with those people? Cilantro is delicious. Probably one of my favorite things, especially with Mexican food. I can't imagine Mexican food without cilantro. But some people say it tastes like soap. That's weird, right? Yeah. Do you know anybody with the soap? I know people savages, savages. I also know people that don't like bacon. So, I mean, you know, what's that? I'm gonna mix that up a little bit. Then we're gonna do the juice of one limon. If you're wondering, Jeremy, why aren't you using a lemon squeezer? Well, there's a, there's a good answer to that. And that is because uh, I broke ours. Because I'm a fucking savage. I squoze it, is that a word? Squoze? I squoze it, I snap the handle. All metal, squoze it and broke it. That's right. So next time you think you're gonna make a mean comment on this video, just think, I'll squoze your head. <laughs> now it's probably a piece of shit and cheap, but yeah, I broke it, so I am, uh, doing the old hand squeeze. And here I've got two tablespoons of oregano, two table, or no, teaspoons, I'm sorry, two teaspoons of oregano, two teaspoons of cumin. <laughs> I'm immature, so I call it cumin. And uh, one teaspoon of salt. Put that guy in now. About two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar, but you can also do red wine vinegar. You could probably do apple cider vinegar. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna give that a little mixy do. Give it a little scrapey on the sides. It's the only thing about food processors. Shit always goes all up the sides. Now, if you don't have a food processor, also you could do this by hand. I know lots of people that just chop all their ingredients for chimichurri and how fine you want it is really up to you. The longer you go, the more fine it's gonna be, the less and rough if you want it more of like a coarse chop kind of thing. 
your call. We're gonna add about three quarters of a cup of an oil of your choice. Extra virgin olive oil, you could use avocado. Avocado, avocado oil. You could use avocado oil, whatever floats your boat. This is gonna be fun trying to get in here. That's never gonna work. That's never gonna, because if I try to pour this down that little spout that full, that shit is gonna go everywhere. All right. Scrape all the goodness off the lid that got splattered everywhere like a bad morning after Taco Bell. Plop her down in the bowl. Ooh. A lovely bowl of chimichurri. I don't know if, does chimichurri normally have jalapeno in it, Al? I don't know, I've only ever made that one. I don't know. This is the one we make though. Give it a try, it's delicious. Our steaks are still dry brining. Now we just gotta give those a couple more hours until they're ready to rip. And we're gonna move on to the smoking stage. All right. And that is some good looking picanha. The dry brining has done its thing. You can't see any of the salt. It's all dissolved and it's been sucked into the meat. The meat is a little darker color. It's looking good. That's when you know you're good. Now, traditionally, picanha, that's all they do is they just salt it. Me personally, I like to throw a little coarse ground pepper. Can't ever go wrong with some coarse ground pepper on beef. Give the fat a little love. Then I found this other stuff at Costco. It's called Kinders. I don't know if I can get it in that camera over there. It's called Buttery Steakhouse. They have actually a bunch of these Kinders rubs, but this Buttery Steakhouse has like, it does have salt, so you gotta go kind of light with it if you've already put salt on something, but it has some garlic, it has some onion, it's got some turmeric, it's got a little bit of butter flavoring, which I think, you, I mean, you can't go wrong with a little butter flavoring on some steak. So I'm gonna just go real light with this because like I said, I already put salt and I don't want to over salt it but this is what I've done in the past and it normally turns out real nice give them all a flip so we can get the other side right quick like some more pepper and a little more of the butter I think it adds a nice little flavor so we got those all seasoned up Got the Traeger going on 250, and actually I need to grab one of my meter probes. I'm gonna try to get this right about the middle of that guy. At 250, it's probably gonna take, I would assume, about 45 minutes to an hour, maybe a little over an hour. Put them on the smoker until 10 or 15 degrees under what you want the finish temperature to be. Then you're gonna take them off and let them rest for a few minutes before you put them on the fire to finish them off. Slap these guys on the Traeger real quick, get some smoke on these bad boys, and they're gonna be delicious. Gotta smack your meat a little bit. Just give a little smack. Just let them know who's boss. Over. Oh, look at that smoke. Ooh, it's a smoky girl. All right. I like to put these on the second rack. Get them away from that heat source on pellet grills is down here. So get them as far away from that heat source as possible. Throw the couple little snacks for the doggos on there. And then we're gonna close her up, let her go until they get good temp. These things came off the Traeger Timberline XL, which did fantastic. I really do love that grill, by the way. I just did a video on that one also recently. Very, very good for this kind of stuff. Uh, really good for all of it, really, but especially this kind of stuff when you're busy moving around, throw some stuff in there, put some smoke on it, holds the temperature, you don't have to fuss with it. It's quick to light up. You don't have to get a whole fire going and all that. Can't beat a pellet grill fed type stuff. And you can see all the red on these, the great color that that thing put on these. It's gonna have put some great smoke flavor. That, Fat is nice and dark where it started to render up. Got some smoke in there. It's going to be really, really good. But what we got to do now is let these chill for about 10, 15 minutes rest while I crank up the old gas grill. And I know what you guys are going to say. Don't give me shit about the gas grill. You've already put all the flavor on it with the rub and the smoke from the Traeger. You're just putting it out here to get a char. So I just want some flames and some heat. You could 
easily do this on a charcoal grill. If I had the Santa Maria, I could do it on there, but it's not here yet. And then I'd have to start charcoal and all that. It's easier just to chuck this guy on a gas grill on high, get it nice and hot and sear these babies off. But like I said, do it on charcoal, do it on an iron skillet, do it however you want it, but we're gonna sear them. I'm gonna crank up the gas grill. Man, these things smell good. I love me some picanha. Now, normally, after you sear these off, you would let them rest for 10, 15 minutes, let all the juices suck back in so you don't lose a lot of juice, but I'm losing daylight fast, so I'm gonna sacrifice this one for you guys. So now, the grain is running this way, so we're gonna cut the pieces like such cooked them to exactly 130 degrees internal and look at that right there oh that is a nice medium rare bit of deliciousness and it just pulls right over. that's the thing about these picanhas if you've never had them if you cut them the right way so that your final cut is across the grain i mean it's just it just pulls right apart. It's so tender. And look at the juice in that guy. You see the juice in that? I don't know if that's coming through over there, but we get a piece of the fat. Oh man. That's better than a ribeye. I said what I said and I'm sticking to it. I think that's better than a ribeye. Now it is important when you're searing them off and I don't know if you saw in the B roll there, but you want to spend a little time on that fat cap to make sure you get a nice brown, rendered, crispy, delicious. Oh, come on. Come on. That is meat candy. Do you have a little piece of that fat in your bite? Mm, 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 mm. There's no way I could be a vegetarian. Definitely not a vegan. The salt. Gets deep down into there because of the dry brine. A little bit of extra salt on the rub we put on there at the end. Nice bit of smokiness. It's got that wonderful red color from putting it on the Traeger. The fat cap is rendered from us searing it off. It's got a nice crust. It's crispy on the outside. Man, if you haven't had pecan, and I know I'm talking about a mouthful, you're just gonna have to deal with it. Cause this shit is delicious. It's my favorite steak. It's my favorite way to do steak. I and mean, I still think ribeye is maybe one of the kings of beef, but I'm telling you what, these picanhas, you slice this up, you can feed five, six people with this easy. My Costco sells these in a two pack. So they're way more economical than a ribeye. They've got a deep beefy flavor like a ribeye. And with that little hunk of fat cap there on the end, forget about it. Tender, juicy, beefy, crispy. I'm telling you, you can't beat it. My favorite stick, love it. Better than a ribeye. Come at me, bro. They're delicious. All right, well, I'm losing daylight fast. I've got family in here that is starving, waiting for this beautiful beef to come in so they can have dinner. My boys love this, by the way. Shit, I almost forgot the chimichurri. Wait. Can't forget the chimichurri with the jalapenos. Get a little spoonful of that. Sprinkle a little of that dude across there. A little chimichurri. Oh, come on, man. I gotta cut the fat off for Al. She doesn't like the fat. I know, she's weird. Your chimichurri is good, isn't it? Mm, let's go out. Uh, the chimichurri experience of 2020. <laughs> I don't know, we went through a chimichurri thing back a couple years ago where we put it on every damn thing. Put that on everything tonight, we'll tell you that. And put that shit on everything. It's so good though. With the steak, it's very savory and salty. Got all the beefy flavors. And then the chimichurri is a little bright, right? Because it's got the lemon in it, it's got the garlic, it's got the parsley and all the oregano and all the things. It just brightens it up a little bit. It's excellent on beef, excellent. And smoky, the beef's real smoky. So it kind of cuts through all that a little bit. Go chimichurri, go raw dog. Good call. Can't go wrong either way.
This is a family favorite in the Cyrus household. We love it. Definitely, you guys try, if you can find yourself a pecan, you look in your local Costco. I know mine carries them. Definitely try this recipe out. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week. Eat yourself some red meat. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next video. Today, we are really testing to see which of you guys hangs until the very end. So you guys that are still here are the true champions. You guys are the ones that hang in to the very, very bitter end. And as a thank you, as we've been doing for you guys that stay in here to the end of these videos, do another giveaway. Been doing a few of these lately, trying to do them more often. Today, what we're gonna give away is a Work Sharp Precision Adjust sharpener. Now this is the base model precision adjust. Uh, it's only been used one time by yours truly when they first sent it to me, this to me to chest out. Uh, then they sent me the precision adjust elite system, which has a few more stones. Uh, and I have this extra one. So I thought why I have this sitting in the a closet when this can go to one of you guys that would really enjoy it and help you keep your knives razor sharp. And then a brand new trigger hat not used by me, brand new, tag still on it, because that would be creepy to give you guys a hat that I'd worn with my sweat all in it. That would be nasty. Tools are as they have been on the last few of these we've done. You've gotta be a subscriber to the channel, You've gotta smash that like button on the video, go comment down below, what hashtags can we do today? Let's do a bunch of hashtags just to make it annoying for you guys. <laughs> Let's do hashtag WorkSharp, hashtag Team Traeger, hashtag smoking them Meats. There you go. Hashtag Team Trigger, hashtag Work Sharp, hashtag Smoking the Meats. That will enter you in. One week from the upload of this video, I will randomly pick a winner and send this out to you guys. Give it a little love back to the people for hanging in. Hope you guys enjoy. This is really the end this time. Seriously. Really though, it is, I promise. No more giveaways. You can go. God damn, that's good. I mean, come on. Come on. Lacanya is the way to go, bro. I'm telling you. I'm telling you.